So, hello there everyone and welcome, it is Aniran here, and today it is time for me to bring you the start of season number two of our Wimbledon Road to Glory here on FIFA 18 Career Mode. This is a very, very exciting episode for me because obviously we're now venturing into the unknown as we head into a new season and a new league. Now, technically speaking, we're still in season one. As you can see by the calendar, we're still in May. But we'll be jumping into the second season, into the 2018-2019 year, and we'll be making some transfers and jumping into all sorts of dealings. We're going to be doing Doing some transfers in this episode, I'm not going to lie, we'll probably do a couple if possible, and then I will try and be in a position at the end of it to leave you guys with a vote on one or more players to sign for our side. So we're going to be getting you guys involved in the future of this series. Also, if I sound ill in this episode, that's because I'm ill in this episode, so I'm glad we've cleared that one up. Anyway, before we jump into season number two, I just want to take a really quick overview of season number one in terms of the personnel in our side and get a gauge for you guys really of who, are, who I think did really well because obviously you know you see the highlights but it's difficult sometimes to see who's been a really really consistent performer so overall in terms of defense I've been so impressed with Oshalaja and Florence who were obviously Wimbledon originals I want to keep them around for quite some time in this save they've been phenomenal in pretty much all episodes apart from like one and Zuzi Toko you guys know about him absolute beast in midfield Looking forward to seeing how he copes in the championship, though, around higher-rated players, because obviously he's not going to grow given his age. Harry Forrester's been in the background, but doing a decent job, not been as good going back as the Silva Lopez, but maybe a bit more influential going forward. The Portuguese winger who we brought in from Peterborough has struggled, if I'm honest, to get involved in goals. Someone brought it up in the comment section last time, and I did tend to agree. He works very hard, and I, that doesn't go unnoticed for me personally. But I would like to see him getting involved in goals a bit more. Maybe we need to train him on his finishing. Nothing really needs to be said about the front three. Joel Azoro, Lyle Taylor and Andre Dozel, who technically isn't a striker but he's an attacking mid, have been absolutely phenomenal. In terms of the other players and the guys on the bench, you know, there's been some youngsters that I've been impressed with. Anthony Hartigan's been pretty good when he's played as well. Really burst onto the scene at the start of the season. Aaron Bolger has been really good since we brought him in for, what was it, 35 grand or something from the Irish League, Barry Fuller, Toby Sibic as well, not bad when they played, we've seen Callum Bailly once, he was really good, Dean Parrott almost got sold at the start of the season and has since been very consistent, Lorenzo Vissa is another one who I was pleasantly surprised with, he's obviously our scout future star and has no real good potential whatsoever, but when he's performed, he's performed really well. One player I didn't mention though was George Long. Now he's obviously on loan from Sheffield United, I do believe it is. And I left a poll on the top right of the screen from last episode suggesting whether I should buy him on a permanent or bring in a new goalkeeper. And you guys overwhelmingly suggested I should bring in a new goalkeeper. So that's one thing we are going to be doing. You can see there's plenty of players on our shortlist as you'll see in a moment. The bar... The sidebar is minuscule because of the amount of players we've got on here. It's quite unbelievable. Now, I won't show you all of the training sessions we do because there's going to be a lot of them. There's going to be about nine probably covered in, this, in the space of this episode. I don't want the whole thing to just be training. But this is vaguely how it's going to be for the whole thing. I know, Niran, you're training someone who has no potential again. I realise that. I realise Lyle Taylor doesn't have potential to grow beyond 67, I don't think, anyway. But this is the point. We, the players that have got potential are going to grow naturally. So I want Lyle Taylor to be involved in this championship season. And he's going to have to be about 68 or 69. Lorenzo Visser, I also want to be good. Um, his, his starting overall at the moment isn't good enough. And Florence, the same. And for anyone who is interested about the other English leagues, here is how things ended. Chelsea won the Prem just out of Spurs, United and Everton getting into the Champions League, relegated were Watford, Huddersfield and Brighton. Over in the Championship, unsurprisingly, Wolves got promoted along with Sheffield Wednesday automatically, then it's up to Aston Villa, Leeds, Norwich and Hull to thrash it out in the playoffs. Meanwhile, it was Millwall, Barnsley and Burton Albion who will be getting relegated. You obviously know what happened in League 1, we got promoted along with Blackburn and in League 2, you can see there that Chesterfield, Luton Town and Wickham got promoted to League One. So, it's that time. We don't know what our budget is for the season, but we're getting offered to take part in some pre-season tournaments. Now, theoretically, they all look pretty decent because all of the other clubs that are involved are in the championship if they're English sides and the other ones are from lesser leagues anyway. So, 
We might as well go for the one that's got the most prize money, because by the looks of it, we should be able to breeze all of them. I think apart from Millwall, in fact, no, I think Millwall got relegated, didn't they? So I think they're all League One teams. So just confirmation then that all the loan deals are done, they've all expired, everyone's gone home. Uh, George Long, Harry Forrester, all the guys that were on loan anyway have gone back, and now Andre Dozel and Fikeo Tomori have also gone back to their parent clubs. On the flip side, you may remember in January we signed this man here, Rory McKenzie, Scottish right mid, who was about 67 or 68 overall. He has now arrived, so he should at least replace Harry Forrester for the pre-season. Now, you can see here that we've got £1.8 million. I knew this was going to happen. I've already created a plan. We've obviously been given money, but nowhere near enough to actually compete in a championship season. So what we're going to do, I hope you guys are okay with it. But I mean, I, I hope so, because otherwise this could be a very boring transfer window. So the plan is, basically, is I've already calculated how much an average championship side would have going into a new season, which is £7.5 million when I did the maths. Now, we're not going to get £7.5 million, but what I I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buy a financial takeover from the catalog uh, I'm gonna get all that money and then I'm gonna spend however much is required to get down to around about five million pounds on a random player and then release them that means we won't actually be at the average but it means we can attain the average by selling players and competing in pre-season in my opinion make it more realistic you wouldn't go into a championship campaign with 1.8 million pounds there we go we've actually now got a bit more of a realistic transfer budget I feel for the start of a transfer window in the championship. And it's no surprise the first person to which this money is going towards. Andre Dozel was one of the standout performers from last season, let's be brutally honest. He was absolutely unbelievable whilst on loan from Ipswich Town. However, we, need, we now need to try and buy him from Ipswich Town. So we're gonna lock in with two mil, which is his current valuation. And we're going to see what Ipswich say about that. They want 2.45. Now, my chief exec said we'd have to offer between 2.5 and, and 3.5. And so, I'm going to counter that, though, slightly and propose a new transfer fee of 2.2. And then a, a sell-on clause afterwards. So, let's do that. Submit the offer. Yep, the Ipswich town representative is happy with that. So, we've agreed a fee, then, with Ipswich for Andre Dozel. I'm hoping this will be a pretty simple deal to sew up. He wants a crucial squad role that is absolutely... Absolutely fine. He'll be playing a lot in this side. Yeah, let's offer the same. I don't want to scare him away. 6,002. If that's what he's on, then we might as well just offer that. And then a signing bonus of 45k. He doesn't want more than that. He wants less. He actually wants less in terms of wages. He wants a higher signing bonus. Uh, now they've changed that again. Now he wants higher wages, but the appearance... You know what? This is too confusing for me, quite frankly. We're just going to accept... That is less in terms of appearance as bonus. We have got quite a lot in terms of wages, so I would rather spend more on the wages side than the bonuses side. So we're going to go ahead and accept that. Andre Dozel then becomes our first permanent signing of season number two, but he is now officially a certified AFC Wimbledon player. So Andre Dozel, welcome to the club on a permanent basis. And without even looking at the objectives for this season so far, we've completed one of them. And that was to sign a crucial first team player assigned to the midfielder or forward position. Whilst we're here, I guess we might as well take a look at the other objectives. Youth development wise, we're looking at signing at least two players younger than 20 years of age with a potential greater than the average overall rating of players currently in that same position. And we've also got to sign one defender to our youth academy. Financially, we need to finish the season with a profit margin of 8.8 .8 mil. Domestic success, we are aiming to avoid relegation according to the board. I think that's probably fair, though I will try and put for mid-table and we've got to try and reach the round of 32 stage in the FA Cup we did that last year so let's be honest you don't need too much of an introduction into this man but Andre Dozel as we've already discussed is now a full-time Wimbledon player no longer in on loan from Ipswich 69 rated now he actually went up and overall since going back to his parent side but one player who is new that you probably don't know too much about is this man here the Scotsman Rory McKenzie who came in from either St Johnston or Kilmarnock I'm really terrified at telling those two, those two badges apart, so I do really apologise. You can see he's very pacey, very agile, good balance and jumping as well. Decent passing, decent stamina, you know, okay dribbling as well. He is a very good player and does provide a lot of pace down that right-hand side. He's also a better overall, would you believe, than Harry Forrester, and we got him for free. And then you can see them almost side-by-side side in the starting 11, which is already starting to take shape. 
Though obviously we do need another goalkeeper. We do probably need another centre mid to replace Liam Trotter there. Arguably we might even need another striker, another winger, and another centre-back. So that's where you guys come in, basically. Drop your suggestions for any one of those positions you like. Uh, a goalkeeper, centre-back, centre-mid, or a winger. Drop them down below. On the flip side to that, however, you can see that there's a couple of players that we are obviously wanting to offload out of the club instead of players that we want to bring in to the side. First of all, Callum Kennedy, who we've not used once during this series so far. We weren't able to sell him last season. Cody McDonald is also for sale. He'll hopefully bring in 300 grand. This man here as well, Quezzy Apaya. This might surprise quite a lot of people because he scored goal of the series so far. We can do better, realistically, and it's just much needed cash injection, if you like. We could probably get like 700 or 800k, maybe even close to a mil for Quezzy Apaya, so we might as well sell him now. And also Joe McDonald, who spent all of last season out on loan to Doncaster. He's 24 years of age and 60 rated. There's just no point in him staying, realistically. All right, time then to get into pre-season, and we're starting off with a game here against Burton Albion. Uh, recently relegated from the championship, so they are going to be a good side. We have taken a lead through Lyle Taylor, but you've got to remember our side is slightly weakened. This would be a huge result, actually, if we could hold on to the win. Darius Charles, though, has been sent off. That's not going to stop us, though, because Aaron Bolger has come off the bench to score his first goal ever for the club, though obviously not technically counted as a competitive goal. And we go and win that game and take three vital points in the group stages of this preseason tournament. Straight back into transfer activity, I suppose. And obviously, as soon as you put some players up for sale, you get an offer for someone who isn't for sale. And that is the case here with Millwall offering for Liam Trotter. Now, I still don't really know how Wimbledon fans feel about Liam Trotter, nor do I know really how you guys generally feel about Liam Trotter, who's just appeared. There he is, right, cool. He, we, could, we could lose him and not feel the loss that badly, is what I'm trying to suggest. But I like him. He's a cool guy, and he scored quite a lot of important goals for us, so I don't want to just get rid of him straight as we get into the championship. But, but just let me know, maybe in the form of a vote in the top right of the screen there, if we were to get a decent bid for Liam Trotter, I'm talking 600k maybe, should we sell him? Would you guys be okay with that? to bring in some more money or are you kind of like nah Liam Trotter's a cool guy he scored some good goals would you believe it we're attempting yet another loan signing we simply never learn do we but this time we're meeting with Claude Puel and we're talking about the man on the left hand side there Harvey Barnes it's going to be a one year ting and they want us to pay 60-40 I'm going to try and do 50-50 there because Harvey Barnes' wages are so high. Claude is okay with that. Okay, loving it. Right, cool. Okay, so I'm not, again, I'm not very optimistic about it because for some reason players just don't like going out on loan on this game. Hopefully we can bring him in because that would really improve the side, actually. Well, you'll have to wait until after this preseason tournament game to find out about that little bombshell because we're playing at Coventry City in this one. We're without the suspended Darius Charles, so this might be a bit more of a difficult task. The Silver Lopez has given us the lead after nine minutes. I can't stress how important 1.7 million pounds would be to us at this point in the series. You can see we're now 2-1 up there after two quick goals. Lyle Taylor there for us and Beaven for Coventry, but Barry Fuller! What a hero! The man who came in to replace the suspended Darius Charles is only gone and scored. Surely his first goal in the series outright for the veteran. The main man, Barry Fuller. Looks as if we're through now to the knockout stages. And it's turning into a very interesting state of affairs because we've now got a bid coming in for one of the players that we had up for sale. And it's the one who is worth the most because Shrewsbury have made a 520k bid for Quezzy Apaya. So we've met up now with the Shrewsbury representative. Let's get into proceedings. We're going to propose a new transfer fee straight off the bat. So 700k slapped on the table. Okay, um, all right, uh... Have I been fooled there? What I don't quite understand. After all this time, you'd think I was a bit more savvy, maybe. But, I mean, the thing is, my chief exec said the most I'm going to get for him is 300 to 500k. So, surely that's a good deal? I don't know. Because they snapped my hand off for it, I feel like it's not now. But it is more substantially than they offered. So, yes! Oh my god, this is going beautifully! I was so sceptical about this, but we've actually managed to loan in Harvey Barnes. That's sick! He's actually accepted the one-year loan move. What a hero! Well, he immediately improves the side massively, and all we've had to do is spend wages on him, so that's huge. Here he is, Harvey Barnes, who can play as an attacking mid as well. He's only 20 and he's 71. 
On, fam, honestly, that is a sick signing. I'm not going to I'm gassed off that. That's mad. As if we've actually been able to load him in. He's not the paciest, but he's just all around pretty good at stuff, basically. This episode's going well. This episode is going very well. Let's now get into some transfer activity, maybe, for a couple of other players. And I'll give you guys the chance to choose who we sign. We'll do that, though, after we've done the third simmed game of the episode. And here is that third simmed game for you before we jump back into transfer activity. We're at home. Well, we're not at home, actually. We're against Scunthorpe, but we're shown as the home side. Pretty sure we're pretty much already through. We don't want to take any risks, and that's why Lyle Taylor has banged us into the lead here as the Montserrat Messi at halftime. So we're 1-0 up again. Can we make it 3 from 3? That would be very impressive, actually, because that would be quite a big thing going forward then into the knockout stages if we won all three of our knock of our sort of group stage matches. Is that going to be the case? Indeed it is. 1-0 win there against Scunthorpe. And you can see from that straight away, we've got £350,000 added to the transfer budget. It's not much, which is why... We now need to progress to the final and win the competition. So as you'll have seen, Quezia Pire may well be going out the door. We have had a 700k bid from Shrewsbury, or that's what we agreed on in the end. And Cody McDonald as well might well be on his way out of the door to, uh, to Rotherham. 300 grand. I realise we could have potentially squeezed 100k maybe more out of that, although I doubt it given his overall and his age. But there you go, Quezia Pire has been sold to Shrewsbury. He has been, I'm not going to lie, he's been a very good servant for the side and I do appreciate the the impact that he had you know he scored that incredible volley I will never forget that volley that he scored that was absolutely astonishing as we progress through the seasons players who weren't even in the starting 11 in League One are probably going to get sold on as we progress so unfortunately he has to be sold so this then this is well it's a big one I'm not gonna lie we're playing Notts County in the semi-finals now of the pre-season tournament very explosive start to the match though where we take the lead and go down to 10 men in the same minute before Walker equalises for Notts County. So it's all kicked off in the first 10. Despite being down to 10, we'll be trying to hope to win this one. It doesn't usually have too much of an impact on a game as going down to 10 men. We'll have to wait and see. Joel Lazoro does though get us a goal to make it 2-1. Can we hold on to that? Yes, we can. Vital, vital win. Made a bit of a hash of it, and Darius Charles is suspended. And as you can see, Cody McDonald has now been sold to Rotherham United. We get just about 200k for that, or just underneath. That is added to the 528k that we got there for beating Notts County in the preseason tournament. So we're raking together just a little bit of money now. But here it is then. Here is the big one in terms of games for this episode. Obviously, it's more of a transfer type vibe in this episode, but but realistically, we need to do well in this game to order in, you know, in order to unlock more funds to make more transfers. So this game here against Millwall is going to be all important. Half time, it's nil nil. But Joe Pigger, of all people off the bench, gives us the lead. Can we hold on? 20 minutes. That is all we need to do. Just the final 10 now. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, yes, we just about do it in penalties. Oh my, I don't know what, I don't know what noise I just made. I uh, climaxed, 100% just climaxed. I was a Gary Neville. In the 90th minute, Millwall equalised, but we won it on penalties. 1-1 one, one the final score, 4-3 on penalties after that late scare from Millwall. Oh my god, that did not do my heart rate very good. But it is potentially like 800, 900, maybe even a mil added on to our transfer budget, and that is huge. So fair play to the boys. And you can see an extra almost 900k to the transfer budget. The board are obviously happy with us getting to the final and obviously then winning as well. And you can see now we have got 5.75 million pounds as a transfer budget and 22k in wages so looking very very healthy so this then starts the section where you guys come in because we're going to start making some bids for a center back we were without Darius Charles during that preseason tournament and we only had Barry Fuller to call upon that's fine against league one opposition not in a championship we need to bring in someone arguably better than Darius Charles so I've targeted three replacements or three players that we can bring in to enhance that position there's more as you can see in terms of center backs on this list but I've targeted three who are within our price range, are of a good enough overall, and have potential to grow to at least 80, I believe. So they'll be with us until we get to the Premier League, hopefully. Now those three players 
are John Sutar here of Hearts, uh, Matt Clark here from Portsmouth, and Dale Fry up here from Middlesbrough, who's the priciest. But if we can try and get him for around about three-ish million, which is what his valuation is, would just about be justifiable. However, down here, Joe Worrell from Nottingham Forest, four to four and a half million pounds, I can't justify because we need to bring in two at least good players after this. Now, if you're a long-term viewer on the channel, you may remember this guy as someone that we signed in a Road to Glory before with Wigan Athletic. He was only ever really a backup player, didn't really have much of a role in the side. Whereas, however, here, he would be more of a starting 11 player. And we're gonna offer 1.8 million pounds. They want 2.25 mil and a 10% sell-on clause. And we are gonna propose a new transfer fee and we're gonna drop that down to 2 million. Hearts representative is absolutely fine with that coming down by a quarter of a mil. So 2 million pounds plus a 10% sell-on clause is enough as far as hearts are concerned. Next up though could be the seriously difficult one because now we're meeting up with Middlesbrough to discuss Dale Fry, who is someone who's been a target for us in this entire series really so far, because his potential is so damn high. Now we're going to offer £2.6 million and see where that gets us. I'm not massively hopeful. Sell-on clause has appeared again, so we're in the right ballpark. So let's see now what Middlesbrough suggests. 2.95 with, of all things, a 9% sell-on clause. So now we're putting £2.7 million on the table, and we are submitting that. They're holding on for 2.9. Let's meet in the middle and say 2.8. Okay, Middlesbrough are not budging. Look, we're sticking to our price tag. In fairness, 2.9 is below his valuation, so I guess we're just going to have to accept that one. We could probably make that transfer happen and just about scrape funds together for everything else, but it would be a massive squeeze. And finally, the cheapest of all the options are... I do believe because now is Matt Clark from Portsmouth. We would have faced at one point during season number one and clearly he was impressive enough to earn being bidded for by ourselves. So we're going to offer transfer fee here. 1.5 is the current valuation. Again, we're going to be stingy and offer just below that, even though that is not very much at all. We want to try and make sure we're spending as little as possible in this Road to Glory series. So 1.3 million pounds is being put on the table there. They've just, they've basically just added a sell-on clause on. That's fine. Right, accept that. 1.35 million pounds plus a 9% sell-on clause for Matt Clark, who is 69 rated, but I think only has a potential of like 80 or 81. That's still very good. I think Dale Fry's potential is about 85, so in fairness, he would be, you know, world class. So, that's that done. All the centre-backs have been bidded for, and to be honest, I'd be happy to sign any of them in terms of the deals that are on the table. I think they're all very good value for money, so really, at this point, it all just comes down to what you guys want, to be honest with you, because we've got John Sutar here from Hearts, who uh, would be joining us for £2 million. His wages would be around about 4 or 5k if we were to bring him in. Dale Fry has a bit more in terms of wages and is a lot more costly in terms of the transfer fee, but we're getting a very, very, very good player if we bring him in. And for less than 3 mil, that's a pretty decent deal, I'm not gonna lie. But on the flip side, it wouldn't leave us with much money to do the other stuff that we need to do. There's quite a lot of other stuff we need to do. Uh, but and then the third option is this man here, the cheapest of the options. Probably the best value for money, actually, thinking about it, in terms of when you weigh up his overall and his potential against his transfer fee, which is only £1.35 million. His wages are pretty low. The, whatever way you look at this, this is going to be a pretty decent deal, whoever we bring in as a centre-back. But the reality is it's down to you guys. So in the top right of the screen, there will be a poll for you guys to decide whether we bring in the Scotsman, John Sutar, whether we bring in the wonder kid, Dale Fry from Middlesbrough, or just the best value for money Donny there is and that's Matt Clark from Portsmouth down in League One. Let me know in that poll, whoever wins is the centre-back that we will be signing going into next episode. The start of episode number two of season number one will be signing one of these centre-backs and doing much, much more. Believe me, there's a lot more that we need to do to this side before it's ready for a championship campaign. Let me know down in the comments section who you want me to buy, centre-mids, goalkeepers. If you think we need anything else in any other position in terms of depth, drop that down below as well in the comment section. And whilst you're there, if you're new to the channel, subscribe and like the video. It really helps me out. So it's that big red button under the video is for subscribing. What an episode this though has been. We've won the pre-season tournament. We've made three signings and we're on the verge of making another very good one as well. Very excited to start the championship campaign going into next episode because as you can see, we will be playing Nottingham 
Nottingham Forest in our first league venture into tier 2 of the English football ladder and we'll also be getting through the rest of this month. So if you're hyped for all of that, once again, slap a like on the video. You can also follow me on social media these days. My Twitter handle is at the official FNG and my Instagram is exactly the same. But it's been a bumper, bumper packed episode of Wimbledon career mode. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. It's been a pleasure ranting you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves. And goodbye. Yo, massive pills. I roll out with some monsters. Looks like your team and you watches. I don't know what with imposters. Time like the man in the Oscars. I'm drunk of Henry and Foster's. I have a career, I am jobless. This bitch you f me so hard. I might just end up unconscious. I like girls and lingerie. Especially if it is crushes. Bitch, I am the bigger picture. There is no way you can crop us.